Well, hey there, hope everything holds up. Horse looks like it's doing okay. Uh, lights flashing and all that happy stuff. So, this is a crane counterweight, but it's so wide, you can't lay it down either any direction. So, it's on an angle, just to kind of help it from tipping. I just got through scaling, and my scale ticket says that I'm in good shape. It was saying something like, uh, uh, full tanks drives 32880, trailer 319, gross 77020. So, you know, I'm good to go there. I just wanted to make sure. So what I did was, I'm just, I'm in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and they were calling for this crane park to go to uh, Cincinnati area, or just across the border in Kentucky. And I've hauled, for this agent, I've hauled for this particular customer before. We're going to go over this. Everything that I could hook up, because my shackles are small, and I'll show you that here in a second. I wanted multiple angles pulling all different directions, and I wanted to go through the eyes as much as possible. I did a chain wrap there, chain wrap there, pulling that direction, that direction, pulling this way, straight down, and forward and rear. Now it's kind of different because my ch my shackles are small and I'm it's my fault for not buying the bigger ones but what I've got is just to kind of keep the the base a little more sturdy because everything's up top I wanted to have something here that would uh, kind of stop any movement you know or twisting or whatever so you know it is pulling back and it is, this here it should be fine because it's up on on wood now if I, um, but it's not too high. Now if it's been on 4 by 4s and we didn't really want to do that because it's so flipping high. Um, I just wanted to keep it as flat as possible with the most contact with the trailer and stable. But that's the reason why. Because where I'm going, it's wacky. You know, I'm not going to take the tow road because they charge you. It'll probably be $130, $40 just for um, a portion of the uh, um, the deal because Pennsylvania goes by class and weight and so you know screw that garbage uh, to me it's a ripoff because I spend a few more dollars for that hundred and twenty dollars you know I can buy the fuel plenty and it just the, the amount of miles I gotta drive is like 460 it's gonna add might as well add another 75 to it so 500 some miles big whoopty frickin' do and do sometime tomorrow in uh, Kentucky. So going up through those eyes up and over was the hot ticket. A lot of them if they you know if they're really thick steel or too far inset like the ones way back there I couldn't quite get any shackles so I just decided to go chain wrap and over the top and as you can kind of see everything is doing pretty well. Now this chain settled it, it looks like it's contacting but it's if it is, it's barely, but the whole thing is, is I've got to keep this, um, as many chains on this puppy as I can. Now on these boom arms, something you got to watch for. I saw Grease, the dead ass giveaway, and I asked them, I said, did this stuff telescope? They said, yes. I said, is there a stop in there? They couldn't tell me, so just go with it. Do the, do the wrap. Now I've got... Um, three straps on here. These are probably, um, I don't even know if they're even 2,000 pounds. I, I would say probably 1,000, uh, 1,200. You might be 600 pounds a piece. I could move them with one hand, uh, sort of, lift it and with a bar. It wasn't too bad, but I wouldn't want to go tossing them around. So I did my uh, strap wrap, but I did move them to get on this piece because of the telescope. And it is a, definitely a tube wrap. You want to, <coughs> you want to get a wrap on it somehow. Don't just try and go over the top of it. That ain't going to cut it. You want to capture. I had to move my uh, spread axle for uh, more stability. I was in tandem while loading. Removed one of my winches off there with the bolt. Slipped it off. Hit the button. Aired it up. Pulled forward. Spread the axle. I had to do all that. That's all good. But this is this also has a good trap, and it's tight as all get out right here. And it all get got off uh, offset a little bit, but it's not going to hurt anything. 
no one's going to say a word. And I went through and I checked all my chains. And you'll see this is common, this kind of chain grab like this. This is pretty common. So it should be good to go. Yeah, it's touching. I'll put some rubber in it. All the rest of them. What they do is they just settle. And no matter which direction I went, it was going to, uh, you know, I probably could have tried to come back here and I'd be all right. And I may do that. I may just come to a different location for that chain. And that's no big deal. But keeping something low like this, um, mostly it's for to, to try and keep it from slipping. You know, I mean, the tops definitely grab, but if I can keep that base stable, then I won't have any issues. My weight is good. I guessed at, now look, look at the light. I told them take center uh, 20, 24 inches in front of the light. So I put my, uh, one of my tie downs on the, the floor so the uh, guys could see. I said, that's where I want the center of the piece. I said, I know where it goes. Now that was a pretty good guess on my part because I know how this uh, thing scales, this 51 foot. So as you can see, let me get it over here. One, two, maybe three hands. And that's about it. So that gives you guys an idea. And it's tough because when you get a trailer at first and you know it's a 48, you're gonna learn that when it was a 53 flat or 53 step, you would learn that. This is a 51, so it's going to have uh, a different um, setup on the way it scales and the way, you know, because 40,000 pound piece, because this piece is 40, I have, I know where to set it and try to set it uh, forward of center and it'll get me, you know, now pretty close on weight. Now the drive axle was a little, a little heavier, like 7 800 pounds. But when you think about it, you know, that's the axle that uh, loses weight because that's where your fuel tanks uh, mostly will be uh, dropping weight from. So as long as I'm legal there, and you know, if I was up at 33,980, I wouldn't care because it's going to drop weight as I drive. <laughs> and this was perfect for length and uh, perfect for, you know, everything. I'm going to be going on some uh, some windy ass roads. Uh, you know, it's, I'm going to do my best to try and take interstate all that I can, but it's going to be a lot of grades. As long as I'm legal, I don't care. It has to be uh, squared away. But I got pretty filthy, guys. I mean, it's raining out here. You know, you get you you get pretty muddy, messed up. But that's just the way it is. If you looked at my sidewalls of the tires they're not bulged they're not bulged that bad here even though I'm tipping downhill that's going to set the weight slightly forward but so you got to take that into account if you're just looking at your tires going ah that don't look right uh, it looks a little heavy you'll get to know it after a while it'll be able to tell you okay yeah that, that tires that axle or that set is bulged out quite a bit I better scale out when you get up in the upper ranges, this is supposed to be a 42,000 pound load. You scale this, the sucker and, and don't just take a chance. Unless you've got your own setup and you're, you own the trailer and tractor and you've got uh, weight scales aboard and you trust them, you know where the hell they're at and what they're set at, then there you go. But I spent, I spent the, uh, what is $11 for the stupid scale ticket and that's fine. So, well, I hope you guys like this one. Sorry uh, it's taken so long to get any. Now, I'm looking at a dedicated load out in uh, um, working on the, in the uh, gas and natural gas um, section. And I'm looking at the possibility of just running fracking sand. I may do that all winter. But uh, I haven't uh, uh, weighed all the differences yet. Being on dedicated has... Uh, pros and cons. If you're just you're not using a bunch of fuel, it's all really short runs. They're all heavy as hell. But Colorado, you know, uh, in the winter coming up, they're gonna be nasty. And especially when you start doing remote locations. So, but anyways, 
Hope you guys like this one. There it is overall. Looks pretty good. I'll probably ch uh, change that one chain out. It won't take me a couple minutes. And uh, we'll see you on the road. Hey right, guys, I wanted to add this a little bit. I just stopped in my chain check. And one of the things I wanted to point out is the width of this. One, two, three hands. So, if you look at that, there's one, two, three. The reason why, this is steel. This is just a wood panel. This is aluminum. If I had that sitting in that center, guess what it's sitting on? Nothing but aluminum. That is a major thing. I know it in my head, but I didn't verbalize it. So I needed to tell you that. And so when we're doing this for stability, it's also for <laughs> not ruining the flipping trailer. So the whole thing is, these are the steel frame beams. And that's why, you know, they're painted blue. You can see them. This is your nail strip. And this is just, you know, so you get like four of those. But the main thing is, is to make sure it's sitting on both of the steel beams. If, if not, you can go, you're going to go through that or you can cause some serious rupture and damages. And that's on the driver. That's not, you know, something that's, um, you know, like unavoidable type situation. You can avoid it by, you know, we just did the plywood. They had an old scrap piece they threw on uh, and that was fine. And uh, when I get to the other end, of course they can have the plywood because I don't, I don't flip and want it. So everything else was pretty good. My straps were tight. Uh, no tightens. I put the bar on it. I didn't just feel it. I put the bar on it. Um, I tightened this one because it did slip a little on this corner. But, you know, that's the chance you take. Everything else good. This one's good. I think it was a couple of chains that I did like um, like one turn on, you know, a few clicks. And so it wasn't really a whole turn, but just to get them, you know, snugged up a little bit because they're chain settling. You know, there might have been a twisted link down here, you know, if it didn't quite twist right and, and go through that. Because you got a sharp edge that you do have to work with. <coughs> so that's something that you got to keep in mind when you're you know, the change are selling. These are tight as hell. So, this stuff's riding just fine. All I was worried about, you know, I'm going through uh, I-68, Maryland, Panhandle, and uh, West Virginia. So, the reason why is probably, you know, the, the, I said in earlier, the toll money that they want to rip you off for on roads that were paid for decades ago. And I'm not playing that game. I'm not doing it. It's just nothing but a cash cow for somebody. So everything's riding good. It's doing fine. You know, you can hear the uh, trailer squeak and squawk a little bit, but you know that's not uh, not unusual. Everything's fine. I keep an eyeball on it. I watch my chain. I look for slack. Look for bounce. You know, sometimes I'll open my window and I'll try and inspect it just to kind of see what's going on. I want to see if there looks like there's any movement in any chain. So, that's it. And I should be done with that one, but I wanted to add that point so you guys understood. See you on the road.